to research, to innovation, uh, but also to, uh, to very importantly and centrally to, to educating the new generations of, uh, of change, change makers. Um, we want to make sure that, that we align our efforts as much as, as, as we can with the sustainable development uh, goals. Um, I, I sometimes like to describe the SDGs as a, as a strategic plan for the world. We, we have um, accomplished a great deal. I mean, think about what it takes for the entire world to, to come to agree on a set of, um, of objectives that are shared by all of us. And even though the, the goals may appear at times to be uh, overwhelming in, in their ambition, uh, they are also very empowering and they enable and they encourage e each of us to, to engage in, uh, in, in action. And I think there are examples every, every uh, day among our faculty and among our students of, uh, about how each of us can, uh, can make a, a, a difference. So um, again, we, we will continue to work collaboratively uh, among the, the universities in the, in the University Global Coalition to share best practice, to inspire one another, um, uh, to, to support one another and to engage in collaborations when they make uh, uh, the, most, the most sense. Uh, this is actually one of those uh, great initiatives, this, uh, this awareness week. I mean, it's an opportunity for us to, to send the message uh, widely in our university. Sometimes I think uh, we find ourselves uh, preaching to the to the choir and, and having these conversations with people. This is an opportunity to expand the circle, to bring many, many more of our colleagues to, to the table and to, to help them really get as excited as, as we are about the, the opportunity to, to use what we do uh, to make a big, a big difference. Uh, today, of course, uh, we, we have a, a great uh, opportunity to engage with, uh, with our friends at uh, Solitest, which is an incredible uh, initiative. This is a, an international nonprofit that uh, emanated from, uh, from an academic setting with the support of, of many different entities, uh, either within the United Nations or around the United Nations, is a great example of how the Sustainable Development Goals can catalyze action and, and, and focus our attention. Uh, SOLID-TEST develops tools that yeah, universities and other organizations can use to assess the sustainability awareness of uh, our students and, and staff. My understanding is that uh, more than 190,000 people have already taken their international test, which is their most popular assessment. During the SDG Action and Awareness Week, all UGC member institutions have free access to the international test and I encourage all of you to try it out. So now uh, I'll turn it over to uh, uh, Professor Aurélien Descamp, uh, co-founder of SaliTest and associate professor at the Kedge Business School uh, in France who can tell us much more about this tool. Thank you so very much to all of you and Aurélien, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Angel. Uh, my name is uh, Aurélien Descamps. I'm an associate professor at Kedge Business School in France, and I am also the co-founder of this uh, NGO called Sulitest uh, that I will uh, talk about uh, during, the, during the next minutes, uh, which is an initiative to rise and map awareness on sustainability and the sustainable development goals. So let me just share the presentation. Okay. I hope that you are able to see my screen. Uh, please let me know if it's not the case. Uh, so as I was mentioning, uh, Sulitest is an NGO uh, which is coordinating an online platform, sulitest.org, uh, developing online tools to raise awareness uh, and to collect indicators on the progress of sustainability literacy. So I will be explaining uh, what we are doing and the, the, the aim of what we are doing at Sulitest. And Estela, who is here with us, uh, who is the community manager of Sulitest, will explain at the end of the presentation how you will be able to try the tool, uh, to try the test during this, uh, during this week. 
So first, why sustainability literacy? Uh, we know that sustainability challenges often relies on human decision, uh, often taken in a professional context. And we are also convinced at Sulitest that if we want to achieve the systemic change that we need, uh, we need to decide it, uh, meaning we have to achieve a mindset shift uh, towards sustainability. How do we do that? Uh, we have several um, options to do that. First, we have to be aware of the challenges and we have to achieve a good understanding of the challenges for all. Then we have to be able to connect our expertise, our skills, our competencies uh, to this agenda, to the 2030 agenda. Uh, and we have to develop new skills uh, to, um, to achieve uh, this sustainable development agenda. Uh, and we also have to work on our mindset to achieve a sustainability mindset, uh, willing to, to engage in building a sustainable future. So this is the purpose of our organization. And of course, we are not alone. Uh, uh, we are part of an ecosystem of other initiatives uh, working on sustainability learning and sustainability engagement. But it's really the main goal, the main objective of Suditest to achieve this sustainability literacy for all. Sustainability literacy for us uh, is the knowledge, skills, and mindset uh, helping individuals to become deeply committed to building a sustainable future and to take informed and effective decisions. So we really want to integrate those three dim dimensions, knowledge, skills, and mindset uh, in order to better equip individuals uh, at least to take informed and effective decision uh, to be able to, to to contribute to the global agenda and to build a sustainable future. So very quickly, the Sulita story begins at uh, Rio plus 20, at the UN Conference on Sustainable Development at Rio plus 20, uh, where we were active in launching a UN-based initiative called HESI for Higher Education Sustainability Initiative, uh, which is coordinated by several UN agencies, uh, including UNITAR, UNESCO, UN Environment, UN DESA, um, among other uh, UN agencies, and uh, more than 300 uh, universities today. The basic idea of this initiative was to acknowledge that as higher education institution, we bear a responsibility. As I was mentioning, if we consider that uh, sustainability challenges come from human decision in a professional context, most of the people taking those decisions are graduates from higher education institutions. So high as a higher education institution, we bear a responsibility at least to make sure that those decision makers can, uh, can be sufficiently aware of the challenges to take informed decision. In order to reach that, we can do a lot of, lot of things. Uh, we can integrate sustainability into courses, into research, into campus management, and other uh, initiatives to, to contribute to the sustainability agenda. But in the end, how do we make sure, how do we measure the impact of what we are doing, making sure that everyone, our students, our graduates, but also our faculty members and our staff and management uh, are sufficiently aware of sustainability issue, meaning they have this basic sustainability literacy not only the sustainability advocates or the people already committed in sustainable development, the students choosing the elective courses on sustainable development, for example, or the specialized master, but how do we make sure that everyone has at least basic sustainability literacy, just to be able to be aware of the challenges and to take informed decision. In every university worldwide, uh, what, regardless of the major, of the degree, uh, we don't necessarily train English teacher or English professional, but we make sure that uh, every graduate has basic knowledge and basic, knowledge level, and basic in English, level in English in order to be able to use it in a professional context with standardized tests like the TOEFL, the TOEIC, or other types uh, of tests. 
in my school at Kedge, if you want to apply for an MBA, we will ask you your score at the GMAT, uh, you being another type of standardized test. So the basic first idea of Sully test was to create the kind of equivalent, but for sustainability. How can we design a test, a standardized test, making sure that you're not necessarily a sustainability expert, but you have the basics. You have basic sustainability literacy. This was the first idea, and this is the first tool that we launched uh, at Sully Test, uh, being this sustainability literacy test uh, designed to ensure that anyone has basic sustainability literacy. So how does it work? It's quite a simple format. It's an online test. Uh, so any university uh, or other organization, corporation, NGOs, institution can register on the platform, sudites.org, free of charge, and start using the tools that are available uh, free of charge on the platform. The main tool is this test, this sustainability literacy test, uh, which is composed of different modules, so different parts of the test. Once you register on the platform, you will be able to organize session for your students, but also for your staff, for your faculty member or other stakeholders, choosing the, the kind of modules that you will integrate into the test. So the format is quite simple to be flexible and to be comparable from one country and one context to another. And the different modules that you will find are first the international core module, the only module that is mandatory uh, for everyone, available in 10 languages using the same question bank uh, regardless of the country, uh, and using this matrix of topics, uh, ensuring that every time a session is organized using this international core module, uh, we have a systemic perspective of sustainability covering the 17 SDGs. So you will never have a session only on climate or only on, on poverty or discrimination, gender inequalities. Uh, you have a matrix ensuring that you have this systemic perspective of sustainability. So first, the international core module is the one used by everyone worldwide. Uh, and then we, we have developed over time a complementary module. We have country-specific modules. 17 country-specific modules today are available online because we know that sustainability by nature is embedded into local context. Uh, so um, sustainability issues, but also solutions, re, um, legal aspect or different uh, uh, issues can be different from one country to another. So we have country specific module designed by communities of contributors in different countries. And we have started also to develop SDG specific modules, partnering with different UN agencies, because if you take the international core module, you will have 30 questions randomly selected in a question bank using this matrix of topics. So you will have the global overview. If you want to go further and to advance in the learning journey on specific SDG, you can have today's specific SDG module. Uh, we have few of them as of today, but this is, an, this is a journey that we, are, uh, that we are on and we are developing more and more SDG specific module. So every resources that, has, that I've just mentioned are available online for free uh, for any university, business, NGO, institution, or other uh, organization. Uh, to be able to, to, to make the NGO not sustainable, but at least to survive so far, uh, we have a, what we call a premium access, a premium membership, uh, to, which comes with fees with fees uh, allowing the customization of the tool. It means that you, with the premium access, you are able to add some additional customized module for your own organization, in addition to the tools uh, available uh, for everyone. And we have a gamification, a gamified version of the test that I will, um, that I will talk about briefly later. So where are we today? Uh, as uh, you were mentioning in your introduction, uh, 
a little bit more than 190,000 people have taken the test so far uh, worldwide on all five continents. Uh, we have an international community of contributors and the contributors are twofold. One are institution supporting the movement, what we call the senior advisory board with UN agencies and also academic and professional networks supporting the initiative validating the content of the international core module and the format of the test. And we have what we call the regional or national expert committees, which are local communities of contributors creating the country specific modules and disseminating uh, the, um, the tools in their, uh, in their own country. So as of today, the test has spread uh, worldwide. Of course, we are really happy and proud to reach uh, this number of test takers, but we also want to improve and to scale up this initiative because almost 200,000 people are very good. But if we look at the 7.5 millions, uh, billion, sorry, of humans, we are far from our main objective of sustainability literacy for all, but the movement is accelerating. So it, so far we manage to rise, at least rise sustainability literacy uh, world for a, a lot of people and organization. And while doing that, we are also building a global database on the evolution of sustainability literacy on knowledge and understanding of the sustainable development goals. So this is why we are reporting at the UN every year. Uh, SUDITEST is one of the feature initiative in the partnership uh, for, the, um, for the sustainable development goals, because every year using an anonymized version of this global database, we are producing a mapping and we are monitoring the evolution of the understanding of the sustainable development goals using the results on the on this sustainability uh, literacy test. So this mapping and this report is available online uh, on our web on our website, and of course we can share it with the participant today. But uh, yeah, you just have to to go on our website if you want to 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 have an idea of this uh, of this mapping. But just to to give you some example of the indicators and trend that we can display using the SUDITES database. We can look, of course, at the average score on the core module. The core module is the same in every country, so it allows us to have some comparable uh, statistics uh, and indicators uh, on the 17 SDGs and their evolution every year. And as we are conducting the survey, which is not mandatory, but we have quite a good response rate at the end of the test, we, are, we can also uh, try to put the score at the test in relationship uh, to different uh, survey questions. I took two examples here that I found interesting. Uh, one is that, as you can see on the right hand side of the, of the slide, um, being claiming to be interested uh, in, sustainable, in sustainability in uh, one's daily life uh, seems to be uh, positively correlated with the, the score of the test. The more you are interested, uh, the higher the score uh, at the test. And being exposed to courses, to sustainability courses, whether they are related courses or dedicated courses, uh, seems to be a way of achieving a higher score uh, on sustainability. So I will not be too long on this part, uh, but uh, of course you can have a look to this report online if you want to, to dig uh, a little bit on those uh, statistics and indicators. So as I was mentioning earlier, uh, we are we are building the plane while flying. We, we launched this NGO seven years ago now. Uh, we managed to, to have a global reach and we are really happy and proud of what we are doing. But of course, we are improving over time and we are adding some resources uh, over time, uh, usually using always the same methods uh, we prototype meaning when we want to add some new resources uh, on our ecosystem, uh, we, find, we find a partner 
uh, and we co we co build uh, new resources uh, including a new module for the test and for a few years now uh, we have started partnering with different un agencies to add sdg specific module available for the test in addition to the existing uh, to the existing module so we have few of them uh, at the moment, one on SDG 7 with UNDESA on clean energy, one on SDG 11, but focusing on waste management uh, with UN environment, uh, another one on SDG 12 uh, focusing on circular economy, and two which are currently under development on SDG 4 and SDG 14. And I can quickly focus on this uh, SDG 14 module because it will be released soon. Uh, this is uh, the kind of thing that we are doing to develop the resources that are available on the on the Suitetest.org platform. Um, we have prototyped the and co-developed uh, this SDG 14 module with a group of experts. So UNDESA is the UN agency uh, leading uh, the content and validating the content at the end before it is uh, put online. Suditest provide the platform and the expertise on, uh, on, the, on the sustainability literacy test. And uh, we have a partner supporting and funding uh, the development of this module, which is Mercator Ocean International, uh, attached to the Copernicus, but for, for the ocean, uh, to develop this kind of resources. And at, at, the, at that point, I should uh, precise that the, the sustainability literacy test is a test, of course. It give, it's a self-evaluation tool. So you, you have a, a range of questions. You have your own score at the end as a candidate. Uh, and you can benchmark your score to the average worldwide. As an examiner, meaning as an, organization, as an organizer of the test, you have a snapshot, you have a common trends and indicators of the sustainability literacy um, of your cohort, whether they are students, staff, or other stakeholders. Uh, and the tool is also a learning tool. And if we look at, at the community today and the community of users, uh, we realize that 80% uh, of the users are using it not really as a test, but more as a rising awareness tool, uh, because with every question comes a learning statement uh, where you identify the sources, where you have a learning uh, element and you know how to learn more on the different topics covered by the test. So it's also a way uh, to raise awareness, awareness among current and future decision maker. Here with the example of this SDG 14 on ocean to collect indicators on the evolution of awareness and to analyze links and gaps between concepts and challenges um, and their understanding by, uh, by different audiences. So very quickly, in addition to the test, which is the main tool, this sustainability literacy test, we have developed complementary tools over time, which are also available on the platform. One tool is a gamified version of the test, shorter version of the test to play per team. This tool called the quiz needs to be facilitated. So the idea is that uh, people are playing per team on their smartphone, tablet, or, or laptop, and the facilitator display the score per team for each question and in the end uh, for the winning team. So it's a really good icebreaker that we used in different contexts in global conferences with 200 people in the room at the UN, for example, for example, or in my own classroom at Kedge with 20 students as an icebreaker uh, to, um, to start a course. And the other tool that we are really proud of that we have developed and it, which is uh, available on the platform is called Looping. Uh, this is a reverse pedagogy interface. Uh, this interface is designed to be used as a tool to organize workshop of reverse pedagogy for the SDGs. The main idea is to use collective intelligence and peer learning to learn about the SDGs and to connect one's own expertise, topic, disciplines, major, uh, to the scope of the SDGs. So this tool is also available online with a pedagogical guide. But the main idea is that instead of taking a test, uh, 
uh, you if you understood if you understood the course if you understood uh, the the main challenges of the SDGs, you should be able to create the good questions that should be on the test. So, for example, I'm using that in my own courses uh, as a as a professor, and I, yeah, I think it's it's working quite well. Uh, I engage students in teams to co-create the good question that should be on a test as a, a pedagogical uh, exercise to understand the SDGs or to connect the SDGs with the, the discipline. I'm an economist by training. So for example, in my economics courses, I have always one or two sessions in my course dedicated to a workshop on looping to co-create questions to connect economics to the SDGs. So one example uh, of use in higher education, of course, many universities are using a study test uh, so far. Uh, we have 1,000 universities and organizations registered on the platform. Not all of them are really active, but as you will see in our report, uh, we have more than 100 uh, big users, meaning uh, universities that are using the tools for entire score cohort of students every year. And uh, the, the idea is that the platform display some tools which are available and uh, every university is, um, is autonomous uh, to use the tool the way they want. So uh, of course, Kedj is, is my school in France. Uh, so as a co-founder of Sweetie Test, uh, I have engaged Kedj to use the tool for a long time now. So I think it's a good example of how we could articulate the different tools and use the different to tools displayed on Sully Test. So two main uses of the tool at Kedge. Uh, at the school level, we conduct entry and exit, exit test uh, using the international core module. So every student takes the test once before the, fir the first course when they enter the school and a second time when they graduate. And of course, it's a way of collecting indicators to to fine tune pedagogy and to have tangible data for impact for our, our accreditation bodies, for example. And Kedge also used the premium membership that I that I mentioned earlier to design customized module. The customized module are used for three main objectives. One is that is to, to have progress in the learning journey, meaning all students will take the general test when they enter the school, and then uh, faculty members will develop customized module for their own major, depending on the choice of the students on the, on the learning path. So we have different module on SRI from the finance department, for example, sustainable supply chain, responsible ent entrepreneurship, as we are a business school. Uh, so this is one way of using it. Another way is that we have customized a survey with the sustainability department of the school to capture the expectation of incoming students when they come to the school in terms of sustainability and CSR uh, in a business school. And we start customizing modules for the staff also uh, to raise awareness, not only for students, but also for the staff. So this is at the school level and in the classroom, as I am a professor, uh, I use two main tools, the quiz as an icebreaker to start a course. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a fun, tool to engage students in a game, uh, in an interactive game uh, to, um, to raise awareness on SDGs and looping as a reverse pedagogy interface uh, to connect expertise to the SDGs. So to finish, and I don't want to be too long, so we have time for discussion. And I let sometimes for Estella to explain the test that you will be able to try this week. Uh, what will come next uh, in the near future for Sully Test? As I was mentioning, uh, we are building the plane while flying, uh, meaning we are in a continuous improvement process since we launched the NGOs seven years, the NGO, sorry, seven years ago. Uh, so we have an existing ecosystem of tools and we want to scale up uh, this initiative. So we are starting uh, fundraising right now in 2021 uh, to scale up this ecosystem. Scaling up will mean two things. One, to enhance and improve the existing ecosystem, the white tools that you have on the, on the slide. 
the test, the quiz and the looping, which are already working, including the premium membership and needs to be improved and developed. And we will add and create complementary tool. We know that we have a good rising awareness tool today uh, with the test, but we don't have a certification yet. We want to develop a standard, a certificate based on the, su on the sustainability uh, literacy test and also add a complementary tool called the Sustainability Literacy Badge. This badge will use mentoring and orientation to move from awareness and knowledge to action. Uh, we will uh, develop mentoring uh, based on your score on the certificate uh, to connect your score to your expertise and skills and to know what to do next, how to move to action, whether it is in your personal life uh, by working with NGOs in your region, for example, or in your professional life by connecting with different partner initiatives in our uh, in our ecosystem. So this is what we are intending to do, to do in the near future to develop what we are doing. And I will stop there and let Estela explain how you can connect to the test for this week. Thank you. As we said earlier, we will give you the opportunity to take the test this week. It will be an opportunity for you to see how it looks in practice, but also for us to gather this idea and do this mapping of awareness of this cohort here of UGC. So we would like to invite you to take a SULI test session. I will demonstrate in a second how it actually looks in the platform, but just to go over the process, uh, you can either sign up or log in into the Silitas platform just by going to silitas.org slash sign up. Once you are registered, um, you will be able to add the session. This will be a session common to the UGC cohort that I created for you for this week. Uh, just a reminder, the session will be anonymous. Uh, just so it's um, safer regarding data privacy, uh, standards for multiple universities, but we'll be able to indicate the name of your uh, of your university of your university because the results per uh, institution could be re later re requested to us. Uh, on Friday, we will be presenting the the results of the cohort and the awareness, just as um, Aurelia demonstrated of what we published yearly at the UN. I would like to do a similar analysis of the results of this session, but that will be for the global um, for the global session. I will not be um, presenting per institution on Friday, but I will be. If it is something that your institution is interested in, feel free to uh, request to us. You will have until Thursday noon London time to take this session. So for uh, my friends in the US, uh, probably it's best to finish the session uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, so then on Thursday, the session will automatically end. So I could get the results to present to you. What is the awareness level of this, of this cohort on, on Friday? Uh, friendly reminder, uh, please reach the results page to save your session. Uh, a Suleta session should take around 20 to 40 minutes. And unless you reach your results page, the results will not be saved. So please make sure um, you, you get to your results page so you can one, see your own results, see how you, uh, what's the benchmarking according to uh, the session results in the country as well, and the worldwide average, but also so your session details are saved. Uh, just before how we actually just before I demonstrate how we actually looks in the SULI test platform, I would just like to say that if you signed up as an individual, but you would like to later offer the SULI test to your colleagues and students, uh, please feel free to contact me uh, later so I can activate your uh, institution, your university account. Uh, my email is on the screen, but as soon as I finish sharing my screen, I will also paste that in the in the chat. So let me just quickly demonstrate how it looks in the SULITES website. Once you reach our website, SULITES.org, uh, you can either sign up here as an individual because you would like to take the SULITES and just put your email and password. Once you get the validation email in your account, you will be able to get uh, to log in 
which is what I'm going to do now as I already have an account. Once you log in, you will see as a candidate this tab of my account and sessions, and this is your personal dashboard. Here's where you can see the sessions that is available to you. In the results tab is where you can see your past results. And here where you see I have a session code is where you put this code here, which is the identification of this uh, UGC uh, session. Again, I'll paste that in the chat in a second. But once you click um, add session, you will confirm that you see here the, the name and you confirm that yes, you want to take that session. Then the session will automatically appear here in the bottom and the session will open in a few minutes. Uh, just later after this event is closed, you see that the, act, the session will be available and you can start taking it and answering the, the sessions. Feel free to uh, send me an email if you have any questions about this survey. There's also a contact form in our website. You can also use that to reach us. And that's how uh, you will be able to join our Solita session for this event. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Estella and Aurelien, for that overview. Um, just to reiterate, the, the reason that we want to do this for the SDG Action and Awareness Week is to give us a snapshot of the uh, level of awareness of sustainability, sustainability literacy in higher education around the world. And we hope to repeat this every year so that we can see how effective our efforts are being at, at, at changing this level of awareness. So we really encourage you all to take the test and to please circulate it to anybody that at your institution who might be interested. And then as Estella said, on Friday, we'll have another uh, rendezvous at this time online uh, with a webinar where Estella will sure, share with us the preliminary results. So uh, we want to leave plenty of time for discussion. We wanted to also welcome Jonas Hartle from uh, UNITAR. He uh, is here also along with Aurelien to answer questions about sustainability literacy. So thank you, Jonas, and welcome. Please feel free to post your questions uh, in the chat, or if you'd like to ask in person, just raise your hand and unmute. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Mary Lou. And uh, that was exactly also just a primer, so have your questions ready, begin to put them into the chat box and or since we are also a small group here, use the raise hand function. I found it it's when you go to your lower part of your Zoom screen under reactions, you probably are fairly familiar with that, all right. Um, we have about 20 minutes left and I thought it would be great to just um, enter to, I mean, uh, into a conversation with Aurel Young and of course also Estella I am um, very, very excited to see where the SULI test has come, Orion, because um, it's not a surprise. I mean, that uh, I've been probably invited to kind of engage you. I remember the very first conversation with one of your co uh, partners. Uh, he's also at uh, Catch uh, Business School in France, um, just at the end of the 2012 Rio Plus 20 summit. And you showed that nice photo of the skyline of, of Rio there. And at this meeting, um, at that lunch, we were discussing what could come next from such a big meeting like the Rio Plus 20 Summit. And for anybody who doesn't know, this was the biggest probably meeting that the UN had undertaken until then. 30,000 individuals had uh, been in Rio de Janeiro for about two weeks, including all 193 member states of the UN. And one of the key outcomes from that meeting back in 2012 was that due to probably also the large attendance of so many individuals from universities, business, NGOs, governments took the quite courageous step to say, okay, let's create the sustainable development goals. So that was the outcome, one of the outcomes of Rio Plus 20. But then key people asked, so how do we make sure this uh, these sustainable development goals don't uh, just become nice words? How do we you know, follow up on that? And one of the uh, contributions is the creation of the sustainability literacy test. And now with over 190,000 individuals who have taken it, that's a great achievement in, in this time period. 
I'm sure people have questions about how it works in practice. And Aurelion, you have talked about this a little bit. But my first question to you is, if I'm a university professor and you talked about the um, way you use it in your own course, but can you explain again, maybe how you use the test before and after a course and what changes have you seen maybe at CATCH, maybe at other universities that this has resulted in? Maybe, of course, in, on one level, you can talk about the, the the, the knowledge uh, that has maybe been increased, the skills um, uh, and mindset that you've talked about, but maybe also from an organizational perspective, has that, in your view, led to changes at the university? Have other colleagues taken up new topics focused on sustainability in their courses due to the use of the sustainability literacy test? So maybe can you give us a few examples of how the SULI test has been used in a university context, and what changes have you seen, both at an individual, the learner's level, but also at an institutional level? Yes, of course, um, you're perfectly right to mention that because uh, it's really one of the, the core objective of study test uh, to reach this, uh, this kind of impact. Uh, basically, as I was mentioning at the beginning of, of the presentation, uh, we want to mainstream uh, sustainability and the SDGs. So we want to have a global reach beyond the, the committed, the already convinced, the sustainability advocate. So this is really a set of tools designed to achieve this kind of, uh, of impact. So in terms of use, uh, as I am a professor also, as you mentioned, uh, in, a, in a business school, I think what we have today is really a good rising awareness and engagement tool. So it's not a tool that will assess, for example, that you are a sustainability expert. The test is, is not designed to do that. It's more a conversation starter, more of a conversation starter to start a journey, a learning journey towards sustainability uh, and to, to to improve the appetite uh, of sustainability uh, of sustainability learning so if i if i'm taking my catch hat as an academic uh, who, who wants to integrate sustainability into into courses and learning um, i think what what is interesting at catch is to use the the test with two main objective with the entry and exit test uh, it allows us to have, of course, it's not a perfect measure. Uh, there are some limitations. And for now, the test is more focusing on knowledge than on skills and mindset. Maybe we will have question on that uh, later. Uh, but we have this, this tool designed to raise awareness and un improve understanding of the SDGs. And at the very beginning, when we launched the initiative, we were surprised to see that not many tools like that were already existing. Uh, so it's a way to have tangible indicators on uh, the evolution of the, of the journey. So we have plenty of different ways of using it. Uh, some universities are using it really as a learning tool, uh, meaning, for example, at Kedja, our students have two weeks to take the test. And we don't care if they if they go to the internet to search for information. Actually, we want them to do that so that they learn things about sustainability. Uh, but in other university, uh, it's uh, one hour. It's used as a test, really, to have at the end of a course a kind of indicators. Once again, it's not a perfect measure, so maybe it's you have to to use that in addition to other uh, assessment or. Or, or things in your courses, but it gives you some indicators on the general level of awareness. And we have also other universities uh, taking the test in the classroom with the stu students. So 30 questions. Every question, we display the question on the screen. Everybody answer the question and we debrief, we discuss on the question on the learning statement and we move to the next question with the, with the professor and so on. So, in my own experience, using it prior to the course as a conversation starter works quite well. I'm displaying the global trend to my students at the beginning of the course, saying, well, 
we are 40, 50 students in a classroom. These are the general trends. This is the general level of this cohort. Uh, how do you react? Uh, uh, how how can you can we can we use that to uh, to improve our uh, our learning? Great. Thank you so much, Aubryan. I will have a few other questions, but I see here Sally Crimmins. Suni, you raised your hand, so I want to call on you. So we open the floor to anybody else also. Sally, over to you. Hi, thank you, Aurelian, for your wonderful presentation. Um, <coughs> Jonas, I couldn't tell if my hand was raised because it's not showing up on my screen for whatever reason. So sorry if it <laughs> felt like I was pelting you, but... Um, Aurelian, the way that you began your intro, I found it so elegant in its simplicity and so um, powerful for that reason, um, that we're working toward this shift in mindset towards sustainability and that we have our responsibilities to, to um, prepare decision makers so that they can make the most informed decisions um, with regard to the sustainability of our of our world. So um, I really appreciated that and I wrote that down because you you distilled it in, in a very succinct way. Um, you and, and Jonas have been toiling in these fields for quite a long time. Um, I'm a later comer to this. I've been working with the UGC for uh, going on, I guess, about two years now. Um, but um, I would love to know what you've experienced or observed in terms of that shift of mindset from your unique vantage point, Aurelian. Um, we have observed that there's not always a high level of awareness among students um, of the SDGs, but once we begin to talk to them about the SDGs, they immediately seem to gravitate to them. They understand them, the concepts resonate and um, they seem quite willing to dig in. Um, but I was wondering if you, what you could observe about um, how that shift in mindset is happening, whether you're noticing any sort of age cohorts that are more aware than others, any regional cohorts more aware than others, and whether the other sort of add-on is, are there universities that you think are doing this really well that we could learn from? Thank you very much for your yeah for your question and of course as a sustainability advocate uh, being beyond study test and what we are doing uh, this is what we want to 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 achieve of course uh, my my feeling and my impression on your on your last comment uh, is that we I think we reached a mild, we reached a milestone of course we are in a specific context uh, we we had a, a good example of uh, nature society economy interaction uh, which are uh, modeled and framed in the SDGs with the, the current situation and pandemic situation that we are living um, having done that for quite a few years I can see that from the students' perspective, there is a there is a change, and there is kind of a, perhaps not yet a mainstreaming, but really something different in the way they are approaching sustainability issues and sustainability questions. Uh, of course, uh, as Sudi test among other uh, initiatives, this is what we want to accelerate and what we want to support uh, as an engagement tool. Uh, but I think we all witnessed a huge student huge students movement uh, in the recent uh, in the recent period and the and the, the recent time uh, that are really challenging uh, our own universities or higher education institution to to cope with this uh, sdg framework and this uh, these challenges so i'm really happy to see that uh, it comes from students uh, more and more, uh, and that we have this uh, this big incentive. And what I found also interesting with the the tools that you, we are using is it's also a way of engaging the other stakeholders. And I'm a faculty member, so I know very well the the barrier to engage faculty into sustainability and sustainable development goal because we are trained to be expert in our own topic so it's difficult to acknowledge that 
in with the systemic scope of sustainability we will not be an expert on the 17 sdgs so this is what we have done at catch to to engage the faculty uh, and the faculty members uh, if you want to design a customized module on your topic to connect your topic to the sdgs you have an expertise it should contribute to the sdg framework uh, the customized module are one way to do that one good way of starting uh to 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 do that and if you want to do that of course the first thing to do is to take the test for you uh, and maybe to raise your own awareness on of the of the sdgs thank you very much uh Young for answering that question i see a question here from um rebecca in the rebecca watts how um, in the chat, if you want to read that, it's a fairly long question. So I'll let Rebecca unmute herself if she wants and uh, just to give you a quick uh, summary of her question here. And uh, Rebecca, if you're with us, can you? Yes. Mm. Hi, everybody. Yep. Excellent, Rebecca, why don't you go ahead? I'm having some connection issues, so I, I'm not going to be able to have video on, but hopefully the audio will work okay. Um, yes, so I acknowledge in my question, I, I definitely don't have comprehensive knowledge of everything that's in Suli test. I've just seen examples from various U.S. universities. I'm at Georgia Tech um, of the kinds of questions that are typically selected and um, presented to students and had some discussion about Suli test at some conferences on sustainability and in higher education curriculum. And I, I've heard um, there have been some criticisms that Suli test still tends to be stronger on natural science and technology than on social science. Um, and my own background is in sociology and social movements change over time with respect to environment and sustainability. So I'm, I'm particularly interested in how we equip students to understand how they can be part of social change. And I, I've heard others also express um, a feeling that that is still not as well represented represented in sustainability literacy conversations and tools like Suli test as as we would hope. So I, I just wondered if you could respond to that and I, I'm not sure to what extent that's a um, that's an artifact of what universities tend to select out of you know the full complement that's available in Suli test or whether that's an area where you're still trying to expand questions. Thank you, yes, absolutely. Uh, so um, I'm trying to make short answer because I'm looking at the timing. So to, to answer to your, to your question, uh, of course, this is something that came up. And as I was saying, we are building the plane while flying. So we had a first version of the test, a two years pilot, and then we conducted a survey and collected some feedback. And we had those kind of feedback from the first version of the test. I think it's still partly is, but we are we have really improved the question set and the question bank with regard to those um, to to those issues that you that you raised. But but you're right and and Obviously, uh, it's uh, something that we, we have to be aware of. So if you look at our report on and our website, uh, we are very explicit about the limitation of the tool. We won't achieve everything with a test, an online test, even wonderful, wonderfully designed as a 3D test. Uh, we, we cannot achieve everything. Uh, this is why we want to go step by step. So we have this sustainability literacy test today more focused on knowledge and awareness because of the simplicity of the tool and which makes it easy to use so we work with our community to improve the question bank over time and really to have a balanced number of questions uh, on problems and solutions on facts and figures and also uh, legal environment initiatives uh, what how can we engage people uh, in uh, the, a transition in uh, 
in changing their own behaviors and so on. So the, the matrix that I was mentioning is available on the on the website. So you can see four dimension from the broader perspective, the macro perspective to the individual role to conduct transition. Uh, so the matrix makes sure that uh, the topics cover this, uh, maybe depending on the number of questions, not always balanced, but at least uh, uh, yeah, with, a, with a balance between those different uh, dimension. And as, a, as an economics, I come from social science also. So I'm, uh, I know that we have to be uh, aware of that in terms of sustainability, not to be too focused on first facts and figures and second natural science or only climate change or uh, all this kind of topics. So I think we reach a point where we manage not perfectly, but to deal with that, with the, the current metrics. Uh, and of course, our community is producing questions to help us improving the content over time. But the second dim dimension, which is really important in your question, I think is the more the mindset or behavior behavior part of sustainability journey. Uh, we don't have that in the test so far. We have one module on sustainability mindset designed by a working group of the principle for responsible management education. Um, and basically the module is used to debrief the, the test with the, the students. So they, first they take the test and then they are asked to react and to reflect on their own score and on the test, which is one way of integrating um, sustainability mindset but as i was mentioning we know we we won't do everything with study test what we have so far i think is a good conversation starter so for example we don't develop MOOCs or pedagogical resources we develop tools to help educators facilitators to uh, better uh, bring the topic of sustainability and and raise awareness so we are connected with different initiatives uh, MOOCs portal, for example, the UNSDG Learn platform for UNITAR, for example, is uh, an initiative and a platform where we are connected to other pedagogical resources. And the idea is really to start by, well, if you want to act on the SDGs, you should be aware and you should understand the challenges. And then you, of course, you will be able to do more uh, on uh, with using different uh, resources and different initiatives that are may be different from, from Sulitest, but in the same ecosystem as Sulitest. Excellent. Aurélien, you just hit it with uh, coming to the top of the hour here. Um, I'm just reminded of Sulitest's uh, mission statement, and I think that dovetails nicely with what you said. Today's world is complex, interconnected, and in constant transformation, and so is the Sulitest. So uh, great. Thank you so much for your reflections and also answering that last question. Um, we have come to the close of that hour, so we have to close now. I do want to reiterate what Estella said. Please do make good use of the survey at the SULI test this week with the code that Estella has put now into the chat function. I hope we can send it around if uh, you weren't able to capture that, but do make sure before you log off to check that out. And of course, to also point you to so many other exciting sessions to, throughout this week. And so, with that said, I'm handing back over to Mary Lou for some closing remarks before we close today's uh, opening session of this first week. Wonderful, thank you, Jonas. So thank you particularly to Jonas and of course to Aurélien and to Estella for both participating in this webinar and giving us with such a wonderful overview, but also for um, kind of embracing the idea of this week with a special session of SULITEST. Um, on behalf of the organizing committee for the SDG Action and Awareness Week, we want to thank you all for participating. Encourage you again to take advantage of this SULITEST, fill it out. Um, join the other events of this week. There are about 20, so visit the UGC um, website and take a look at the events that are coming up this week. And then of course, there are also resources available to you on that website that you can bring into your classes and share with your colleagues right now. Um, I think we are all in this together and we're all interested in seeing a better and more sustainable future for everyone. So this is where we start. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.